If you want to play big faster, you cannot do it alone. You need people that you trust, that you truly delegate things to, not just give them to them and say, hey, go work on this part and I'll finish the rest. You're going to have to be able to do is build an effective team that you trust, that can take it on so that you can go focus on the things that matter the most to you as the owner entrepreneur. Microphone check, one, two, what is this? You're now listening to a brand new episode of the Play Big Faster podcast. Look what you done started. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of the Play Big Faster podcast. We are joined today by Ryan England. Ryan is the creator of Corkpit Hiring System. Hi, Ryan. Hi. Thanks for having me today. Thank you so much for being here. Now, I was really excited when I read your bio, and I know that you just recently had something great happening around October 17th that you may want to tell us about. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, I'm the CEO and founder of Core Matters and creator of the Core Fit Hiring System, like you already said. I've been doing this for, gosh, a little over a decade now. And what we do at Core Matters and what I'm so passionate about is helping entrepreneurs, small businesses, up to about 250 employees, really attract, hire, and retain better frontline talent. That's the biggest challenge for a lot of businesses. It's the one thing that holds back a lot of companies from being able to grow, especially in the service industries, is that they can't find good people who want to work, who want to do the work well, who want to take care of the customer, you name it. Like there is an issue with it. And so we partner with our clients and help them solve this problem. Oh my gosh, look, you have actually said a mouthful. Because other than like sometimes being undercapitalized, finding good human resources, human capital in your business is so important. So I know you didn't just wake up one day and say, hey, this is what I want to do. How did you get to this place? Whew, yes, you are right. And in fact, it took a lot of soul searching and meeting with my mentors to figure out how we got here. But I grew up in a blue collar family. My dad was an owner operator. And I remember the crazy hours he put in and how over decades that business started to own him. He was no longer the owner, the business owned him. And it wasn't until I was older that I realized that the reason for that was he didn't know how to hire good people, trust them, let them take over things so that he could step back. And it wasn't that he wasn't a good boss, it wasn't that he was a good manager, and it wasn't that he wasn't a good leader, it was just he didn't have the skills, he didn't have the tools to make it happen. So when I started my entrepreneurial journey, I started working with a lot of home service contractors. That was the group that I started working with. And a couple of years in, they didn't need my support in generating leads or keeping the customers coming back. What they needed was more people in the trucks to service the customer. And so I had a bunch of customers. It was the weirdest thing in a couple of months period of time, a bunch of customers said, I don't need leads anymore. We can't work together because they had no idea I could solve this recruiting problem. And so I had one give me the shot, said, hey, if you can fix it. Three weeks later, they called me back. They said, we just filled four trucks. We got two more on order, let it ride. And I was like, that was so much fun. And what I realized in that moment was I owned a marketing company helping them generate leads. Recruiting is a marketing activity. And as a marketer, all I had to do was create applications for them. And so we did that, but then I realized they didn't know how to interview, they didn't know how to follow up, they didn't know how to onboard, they didn't know how to engage. And over time, I just started implementing new processes that I had learned at my time at corporate, things that I had learned by reading books. I love to read and learn new things. And in 2019, I started the, using the Corfit hiring system and been doing it ever since. So where did the name Corfit come from? It was really interesting The first iteration of my model was called the right fit hiring system. And the thing I didn't like about right fit, when you get to know me, you'll know that I don't like things that are popular. <laughs> I like to be a little disruptive, think outside the box. I really struggled with right fit because it was something that so many people use. It was almost cliche. And when I went through my branding exercise to come up with the name of the company, I came up with core matters. And it was the thing that the things that are at our core is what matters most. The things that we're most passionate about, things we're most excited about, the things that are fundamental to who we are and the business we're creating, that's what matters. So the name of the company was Core Matters. And I was on the phone with my trademark attorney. He's like, why are we sitting here thinking about how to make right fit in? He goes, why don't we just say core fit? And it was in one of those moments that I just got slapped with the obvious hand. It's, I don't know. Why don't we? And that's how we came up with core fit hiring. Why is hiring so hard to do? 
I think it's two reasons. The number one reason is as employers, we have lost sight of our responsibility in creating what I call the employee employer relationship. We've lost sight of the fact that when someone comes to work for us, they want more than just a paycheck. And it was hiring was so easy for so long that we became complacent and we just said, if someone doesn't want to fit, we'll find someone else. And so as employers, we lost the skills and the abilities to really attract and retain people. We never really thought about that. So I think that's one thing. I think the other thing is that the job market and the pandemic really did a number on this, but the job market has changed. And not that they've changed a lot, but the pandemic exposed a lot of things that they didn't realize, like the importance of the gig economy and how prevalent it is and how people have options now, especially with this 24 seven interconnected global marketplace, people have options. And so you have employers who have forgotten their place. And then you also have a job market that's evolved, but employers haven't kept up. So I think that's, those are the two biggest reasons it's so difficult. And oh my gosh, you're reading my mind because when you talk about a gig economy, I almost live on Fiverr now. I didn't even know Fiverr existed prior to the pandemic. Yeah. And a lot of what I do in my business, I've been able to incorporate contractors. As before, I had people sitting at desk and doing tasks and things like that. And we really just come to the office to meet clients. Otherwise, I'm working remotely. Yeah. And I love it. But it's something that I didn't place as much value on prior to. So how did that change the way that your business structure, your business was structured prior to the pandemic? My business has always been one where I have people that are remote. I've never, I can't say never. There was a period of time where I had some people in the office, but that was more of a matter of convenience than it was structure. So for my business, it's always been virtual. In fact, we went 100% virtual in 2019, which now that I look back, go, oh my gosh, that was such a good thing. Because at the time I was scared to death because everybody wanted to meet in their office. Everybody wanted to sit around a conference room table. But then the pandemic hit, we were ready to go for that, which was great. But I'm seeing a lot of other companies that aren't, as positioned as easily because we're a training company like we're coaching and training we can do that virtually we can do that anywhere anytime that's easy but for companies that have to visit a job site or a homeowner's residence to do the work it's a lot harder to think more of that gig economy but what we're seeing is a lot of new technology coming out we're starting to see people change the way they think about the employee employer relationship and they're just more open to things that were exposed during the pandemic so what are some of the things that people are doing wrong when it comes to hiring? I think one of the big things that employers do wrong is that they spend too much time selling themselves. And if you read my new book, I talk in there about how you're the buyer. You are not the seller. As the employer, you are the buyer. They should be selling you. But what happens is too, too many times the job seeker, the candidate walks in and the employer's vomits all over them. These are all the reasons that you need to come work here. And the candidates, okay, I'll take the job. And we have no idea if they're the right person, if they can do the work, if they're a fit, because we're so desperate. We'll do whatever it takes. And so I think that's one of the big things right now that people aren't realizing is that this is a process that takes time. Nobody gets married after 15 minutes on the first date, but I meet employers all the time that'll interview for 15 minutes and say, you're hired. And why are we doing that if what the purpose of this is to build a relationship? is to build a relationship with someone who's going to be with us long-term and support us long-term. Let's kind of unpack that because you do have trades where you there's high turn. And so you're always incentivized just to get a body in the door. Sure. What is the dating process like between the employee and employer? We dig into that root cause of what you're talking about where there's high turnover. High turnover is almost exclusively caused by the employer. You're either making poor hiring decisions or you have a poor company culture that can't keep people. So if you have high turnover in a position or even an industry, I was just talking to someone about this in the trades particular, there is a lot of turnover, but that's because we almost built the industry that way. If we think about it differently, we can solve the turnover problems. And so when it comes to solving the turnover, I found that more than half of your turnover issues come from making bad hiring decisions. You're hiring someone that's not a right fit. So when we look at interviewing, 
I want you to think of it as a little bit of the dating process. Like you said, it's the first contact you have with anyone is just to determine if you want to spend more time with them. You don't need to solve all the world's program problems and pre-qualify everyone in the first five minutes. That's not the point. You wouldn't do that. It's not like you're going to go on your first date and go, so here's my plan for the rest of my life. I want to make sure that we have kids by the time I'm 30. I want to make sure that this is where we live. You would never do that on a first date. Yet we vomit all that stuff over candidates in the first interview. And they're like, whoa, I just need a job right now because my rent is due. And you're talking about 10 years from now and what my career is going to be like. Slow down, pump the brakes a little. I don't even know if I like you. And so the, that first interaction is really just a, do we like talking to each other? Do we think that there could be an opportunity for us to work together? And then once you move past that, move into what I call the culture fit, which is this someone that behaves in a way that aligns with how we behave? Is this someone that has a vision of their life that's in alignment with a vision of our lives? And when I say vision, it's like, where's the company going? Is, does this, is this somebody that wants to get in and join us on this journey or not? And then the last one is, do they have the same sense of purpose? Are they driven by the same things we're driven by? Because if not, you have misalignment, you're going to have frustrated employees, you're going to have a frustrated leadership team, and you're going to exacerbate turnover. This is so good, Ryan. This is really good. Did you put some of this in the book? This is all in the book. Yes. Okay, give us the name of the book and tell us what else we can find in the book. Yeah, so the name of the book is Hire Better People Faster. I know this title's a little obvious, but that's the whole point, that my goal here is to help entrepreneurs hire better people, but do it in a way so it's not super draining. There were people probably listening to me talk about those first two stages of the interview process. They're like, I don't have time for that. <laughs> and you know what? You probably don't today. But if you don't make the time for it today, you're never going to have the time for it because you're going to be constantly chasing this revolving door of retention problems. But inside the book, what I do is I break down the entire core fit hiring system. So there are seven components to the core fit hiring system. And I dedicate one chapter to each one. And then I introduce a couple of tools, somewhere between two to four tools in each chapter that you can take and go implement in your business right away. Some of the tools are going to take a little bit longer. They're going to require a little bit more of self-reflection and making sure that you understand where you're really going with your business and why you do what you do, especially when we talk about company culture. But some of the tools you could give to someone on your team, they could implement by five o'clock this afternoon because they're really easy to do that. And the book's available everywhere books are sold. And for those people that buy the book and go to the book's website, which is hirebetterpeoplefaster.com, I've got 12 templates and worksheet tools that they can download for free just by letting me know is my way of saying thank you for purchasing the book. And all of those tools are designed for you to start using right away. Oh my gosh. So is the book ideal for owner operators, managers? Who is like, who is the best person to read your book and implement some of this? So the book was written specifically for the owner operator or even those on the leadership team. So somebody that actually has authority over the processes and the systems that you roll out inside your company. Now, we dig into interviewing a lot. Interviewing is my favorite chapter. It's the one that I'm most passionate about. So if you're a hiring manager or you're someone doing a lot of interviewing, you'll still find value in the book. It's not like we excluded you, but it really is designed for those people that have control over the process inside their company and says, okay, this is how we're going to do it. It's very much a how-to book. It's very much how to. I don't spend a lot of time selling you on the ideas because I think most people can agree hiring is hard and it needs to get easier. And so the tools and the techniques that we outline in the book are, are to help you with that. How is this book different from your first book, How to Hire the Right Ones You Don't Want to Fire? So that book is it's a much shorter book. So How to Hire is it's only about 60 pages. It's something that you can read real quick. It's a little bit of a primer on the interview process. So some tips, some techniques, a few short stories, things that you can say, hey, I'm struggling with this issue inside of my interviewing process. And then we give you a solution inside of that book. Whereas the Hire Better People Faster is a complete overview of our system. I would say that how to hire the other one you mentioned, the smaller one is a little bit more of a, just a troubleshooting guide, a little bit more of a primer specifically on interviewing. 
So can we also find this in bookstores or is there somewhere else to get this? I tell everybody, just go to Amazon. They're all available on Amazon. But yeah, most of the bookstores online, at least, I don't know how many copies are out there sitting on a shelf in a bookstore, but yes, it's available in all the bookstores and then hire better people faster. The audiobook is now coming out. So that one is available on audio as well. I love that so much. Now, you said something when we started the interview that you work with businesses that have about 250 employees, up to 250. Yeah. Where does that number come from? It just I'm just trying to figure out how people get their metrics. Yeah. So for me, it was a lot of trial and error. But what I found was, depending on the industry, so we have some companies that we work with that go up to 500, but they're big construction companies with a lot of people out in the field and not a lot of leadership. But once we get over a certain amount, and I found it's about the 250 mark, we end up seeing organizations that are more siloed. And so it's harder for our program to get rolled out into all the different departments. And that's just not something I enjoy doing. <laughs> I don't like seeing it roll out in one department and then not in another. I would rather work with a smaller company and see it impact the whole organization because that's where you're really going to get the biggest lift. Ryan, the one thing that I love about what you're doing and how you're helping businesses is that, yes, you have these resources out here, but you also have another way that people can get some great information. Tell us about your podcast. Yes, I have my own podcast. It's the Talent Tackle Box. We just launched it in, I think it was May of 23, so it's not that old. But every week we bring in a subject matter expert. We bring in a client to share their story. We meet with other industry experts that are making it happen. And what I really want to do is I just want to be able to bring actionable topics to my listeners so that they can go apply these things right away. Because there are so many things that people can do to get really great results. They just have to know about it. And so that's why I started the Talent Tackle Box was just really be able to give back to the community and let people know that there's a, just a wealth of resources out there. Anyone who's listening to this, if you love what Ryan is saying as much as I love it, please go check him out over at Talent Tackle Box. And Ryan, if you had one piece of advice to give to an owner operator or a solopreneur on how to play big faster, what would it be? I think it would be the book that we've been talking about. <laughs> Study the pages of that book, learn how to implement the tools, because if you want to play big faster, you cannot do it alone. You need people that you trust, that you truly delegate things to, not just give them to them and say, hey, go work on this part and I'll finish the rest, like truly delegate things to. If you want to play big faster, that's what you're going to have to be able to do is build an effective team that you trust that can take it on so that you can go focus on the things that matter the most to you as the owner entrepreneur. Definitely. Look, tell us how we can reach you. What is the best way to get in contact with you or to support you and follow you on socials? Yeah. So I am very active on LinkedIn. That is my platform of choice. So you can look me up there, Ryan England. We're also available on YouTube, Twitter, all of the major ones. But if you want to learn more about our program and what it is that we're doing, corematters.com is the website. We make it really easy there for you to contact us, but also get more education, more tools, more tips. We have lots of downloads for you. I want to give all of this stuff away as much as I can, because I think that especially in the industry that I'm most passionate about, which is the trades, they need the help. But what I'm finding is the more I do this, the more every industry needs this help. And so I want to be able to give away as much of this as I can and just really support those entrepreneurs out there that are making it happen. Ryan, thank you so much. And to everyone else, until next time, play big faster. Thanks for listening to this episode and remember to play big faster. 